What's on your radar, Ryan? Well, in 2016, California's Supreme Court ruled that if a worker won a monetary settlement from a former boss in exchange for agreeing not to sue, the worker ought to be classified as a, quote, prevailing party and therefore entitled to recover some reasonable legal costs. Justice Leandra Kruger dissented. So later that year, in a 5-2 ruling, the court determined that a company with 14,000 private security guards was breaking the law when it required its workers to keep their phones and pagers on during break and required them to be on call or to quickly return. The court ruled that, quote, a rest period, in short, must be a period of rest, noting that the policy would block workers from taking a walk, making a phone call, or pumping breast milk. Justice Kruger dissented. So Leandra Kruger is now on Joe Biden's short list to be elevated to the Supreme Court. Yet since former Governor Jerry Brown nominated Kruger in 2013 to the California High Court, she has consistently sided with corporate interests and against the rights of workers, which suggests that if she moves from the short list to the bench itself, she'll be an ally of the court's pro-business wing on the question of corporate power. Though the Supreme Court often finds itself divided on social and cultural questions, when it comes to the rights of corporations, the safest way to predict which way the court will rule is to know on which side the U.S. Chamber of Commerce weighed in. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, who recently announced he'd be stepping down, is also an ally of big business, meaning that swapping Breyer and Kruger would do little to shift the balance of the court in that respect. So in another California case, a worker attempted to bring a class arbitration suit against an employer, but a trial court blocked them from doing so. The worker appealed, arguing the arbitrator should be able to make that decision given that both the worker and employer had agreed to that arrangement. The appeals court agreed and allowed the worker to go forward. Justice Kruger dissented, siding with the company. Now, sometimes Kruger's pro-business votes have been in the majority. In a 2019 case called Voris v. Lampert, Kruger blocked workers from new efforts to recover stolen wages. In a dissent written by two other Brown appointees, Justices Cuellar and Liu, they said that restricting worker rights in the case was unjustified legally. Kruger disagreed and she prevailed. So another Kruger dissent written in 2020 came in Riley v. Marin Housing Authority. Now this was an interesting case and here's some background. So, in order to qualify for many benefits in the United States, families are forced into a variety of indignities, including the threat that any increase in wealth or income, however temporary or from whatever source, could come with its own calamity as the state could respond by revoking your health care or housing benefits. So the case involved a mother who was caring for a severely disabled adult daughter at home and was getting compensated through a federal program to do it. The Marin Housing Authority was claiming that those payments should actually be counted as income, which then meant she owed a substantially higher monthly payment under her Section 8 voucher. Now, fortunately for the family, the court intervened, arguing that the entire purpose of the program was to keep families together and to offset the costs of the care, not to count as income. Now, Kruger is obviously an extremely qualified and talented judge, and none of her critics say otherwise. And Robbie, like many of the others on the bench, uh, she, went, she went to uh, Harvard for undergrad. She went to Yale for law school. In fact, she was the uh, editor of the Yale, uh, Yale Law Review. Extremely qualified candidate. She was the, uh, both of her parents were physicians in, in Pasadena. She's the daughter of a, a Jewish father and a Jamaican immigrant mother. And so she'll bring some you know, seriously needed you know, gender and racial diversity to the bench. But when you look at her record, on, on the questions of business and worker rights and in the, on the questions of kind of the meritocracy, we're not going to get that kind of diversity if Kruger becomes the pick. Yeah, which is, I, I think, what, uh, what a lot of people we've had on the show have been warning about, that the, you know, if the narrow focus on a race, race and ethnicity diversity um, doesn't necessarily mean you're getting someone with a more progressive or a different right. perspective. Um, I mean, this is kind of the whole problem that the like Ivy League affirmative action approach takes, or the race-based admissions. Like, we need a diverse diversity matters so much. We, need, we gotta make it more diverse, and by that they mean surface diversity. But if you're bringing every, but if everybody has the same views, the same, this the, like the same ideology, the same kind of position, to, and, and uh, with respect to wealth, uh, is that actually diversity? So I sort of disagree, and so. What I would say is that you do affirmatively have to force institutions to diversify 
along lines of uh, race and gender because otherwise they, they, just, they just won't do it. But you have to expand your definition of diversity to also, to also include uh, you know, pol you know, ideological diversity, uh, and, uh, geographic diversity, and class diversity. Now, other, otherwise, now, uh, Democrats, when they're nominating a Supreme Court justice, should not uh, prioritize ideological diversity. They should prioritize ideological affinity. Like, they should put their own ideologues <laughs> right, right. onto the bench. And if, even if they weren't saying that they were going to put a, a black woman justice on the bench, they would still be leaning towards a pro corp. It would just be a white male uh, corporate justice. So all things considered, I suppose it's an improvement. Uh, but so I, I do, but I do think institutions, uh, you know, if they're not pushed, won't won't diversify. But what they do is they then point to that uh, diversity to then not do anything else for society. Right. But they just they're like, well, we're done. We we did our socially beneficial thing. Aren't you happy? Look at our look at our board. Look at our board of directors. You know, we're you know leave us alone about the genocide that we're involved in, you know, over in uh, India or Afghanistan or Yemen. Or it's the know. easiest thing for corporations right. to do. Right. Say so we're committed to diversity. Right. Yay us. Right. Let's get some applause going. Right. Where's the applause? Right. And easy it is, as it is for them to do, they still resisted it for decades. Uh, so because there was a, you know, an old boys network that didn't want to be broken up. Right. So now it's reforming into a new network. That's not old boys, it's old boys and girls. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, just, just diversifying the surface kind of characteristics of the Supreme Court will not produce. No. It will not like, produce a vastly different. More 9-0 yeah. Chamber of Commerce rulings. Or not, yeah. Yeah. I don't, well, I don't know. I probably agree with most of those Chamber <laughs> of Commerce rulings. I mean, we'd have to look at them one by one. I don't know how much I like government telling business that they can't do what they want to do. but. Right. You're going to love cases. this Supreme Court. I, I, I know. I'm, I, I do. I do, in fact. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to say goodbye to, uh, to race-based admissions. Uh, Harvard's about to get a slap down from the court, I think. And, what would uh, you have uh, ruled on that Marin housing? I mean, obviously, you don't, don't know all know. the details. I don't know. But also, Marin housing authority. It's like the rich, got to be the richest county like in the world. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're going to haggle a woman you know, who, who's taking care of her severely disabled adult That's daughter. Okay. Your nickel and dime. Or Sound bad, throat, but I, I can't. I, as a who knows, maybe one day I will be nominated to the court, so I cannot. <laughs> can't, can't have any positions. I, yeah. Like everyone in, like the people in the, uh, all of them when they go through the, uh, the, uh, the, the Senate inquiry, they must decline to answer any question right. because what if a similar case were to arise? I can't answer yeah, any question. Never, I can't let you know what my thinking yeah, is. Never that thought about be, any of these issues. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm being facetious, of course, right. because that is always ridiculous at those hearings when they, they refuse to answer any specific questions questions about their legal philosophy because of the, oh no, a case might come up. Like, it's, it makes, it's so dumb. It's, I've never understood it. That, that's for nominees, you know, Democratic right. nominees, Republican nominees, all the same. No, to, to tell us, it doesn't, you're being put on the court to rule on it. Just tell us like what your opinion yeah. is on these things. Somebody did, a, I think it was NPR years ago, did a funny segment that was like, you know, if you ask people the question of abortion rights, there will be like, one and a half or two percent that say unsure, don't know. Right. Everybody's got an opinion on it. Right. They're like, it just so happens that every Supreme Court nominee unsure. Follow, right. falls right into that one and a half percent of the American population who's just like, you know, don't, not, not so sure about that. Yeah. Although I kind yeah. of, I, I fall a little bit into that one and a half percent. I, I have well, there's mixed the, views people personally who are, on the. People who are ambivalent and struggle with the question right. makes up probably half yeah. of people. Well, I, right. I think the the polling I've seen on the question is the majority of people think that abortion should be illegal in some circumstances and legal in others. Right. So, which is where I am at. Right. It's a difficult, difficult question. All right. Well, we'll have more rising right after this.